Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! Today's episode is brought to you by Pet Assistance First Aid Kits. If you're like me, you love your pet. You take them with you if you can, certainly care for them a ton at home, but just remember that no matter where you are, you are your pet's first responder. Like it or not, you are your pet's first line of care and perhaps only line of care. They depend on you to make sure that they stay happy and healthy, and the people at Pet Assistance have made sure to create a product that will help you do just that. With the help of veterinarians, the Pet Assistance First Aid Kit is a 60 plus piece first aid kit that comes in this handy carrying case. It's a soft carrying case that is meant to be as light as possible. The entire thing fits easily in your car or in any kind of suitcase you're going to use during your travels. The kit contains many bandages and wraps of all sizes for your pet, and it also contains things such as cleaning solution, Q-tips, combs, lancets, and a dog whistle. Here's a list of all the things included with the kit, and hopefully you will find it useful as I have. Remember, pet assistance for the first line of defense for your pet. Okay, everybody, I know this product isn't new, but you can still purchase it. So I figure some of you might be considering going out and getting this. Um, so I thought I would show it to you. It is the Bachman Branchline Midland Pullman in double O scale. For those of you that don't know, the Midland Pullman was basically a diesel service designed to run between London and Manchester, and it was designed to serve business class customers in an all first class configuration, at least this one which was the six car set. This was the first time something like this had really been attempted in England. And what they were hoping to do was to replace the steam locomotive service. And they were also gonna to try to compete with the burgeoning car and airline routes that were making it more convenient for people to travel between those two cities. There was a hope that the train could reach a maximum speed of 100 miles per hour and average no less than 60 miles per hour over the entire trip. In fact, it only got to about 90 miles per hour and the speeds were actually somewhat slower than steam service, but the diesel multiple unit um, was cheaper than steam. So it was actually kind of good for the railroad and this was obviously the future. This Bachman models the six uh, car train and basically everyone was the power car fitted with a 1000 horsepower engine, a basically a passenger car and then a kitchen car. And then they basically flipped that on the other three sides. So in a way it was one train split. It was two trains that were exactly the same put back to back. And that way they wouldn't need to wire it at the other side. It was designed, of course, to be state of the art, but had some ride quality issues that they never quite got panned out. But the interior certainly was wonderful. And you can see here, this is the red section of the train and there's a matching one in the model too. So I think the train served its purpose. They had to kind of fiddle with the scheduling a little bit because it was designed for commuters traveling between London and Manchester. And for a while they ran it too late in the morning for it to make any sense. So people wouldn't be able to get to their whatever connection they have in Manchester. And then it would leave about the correct time. But so they had to fiddle with that some. And uh, overall, you know, I think it was pretty successful. It seemed to make money from what I could tell. Um, even though there was a quite a premium attached to being able to ride on this thing. Probably a lot of that was novelty. If you wanted to ride the best of the best, then this was the train that you were gonna take. It actually appeared in a few movies. One of them is this early bird. It's a comedy about a milkman. It's kind of interesting. You can watch the whole thing on YouTube, but it appears briefly when he loses his milk cart here and it rolls down onto the track and the Midland is the train that happens to hit it. No. The 
service only lasted a few years, about five years it looks like, because they electrified the London to Manchester route and they replaced it with a more conventional train set. And because of that, they were able to change the cars out based on need. So it didn't last long, but it sure makes for a neat model. I just purchased mine from the model Scent Ray, which is in England. I couldn't find any here and it wasn't cheap. I paid 658 lamb chops for it. That doesn't include shipping and that did include VAT, but they bumped that back to me. So this is about what it came out to anyway. Now, one thing about those models, I had no idea what it was supposed to sound like. So I went ahead and had them fit DCC and had no idea which one to choose. Had no idea. Either way, it wasn't going to be cheap either, but since I figured I had to have something done, I had them choose the house. That's, that's the one I picked. I have no idea why. That's I just picked that one. Anyhow, after a little while, um, the model centric got to me and said, hey, you know, you got a sound chip in one side, but not in the other. And what happens is the engine has to spool up on one side and the side where it doesn't, which is a lock pilot, it starts to pull on the whole train first. He's like, the only way to get around this is to put a sound file chip in both. And <laughs> um, I don't know, do they need someone to actually do this? Because you can tell the lock sound decoder to ignore the engine spooling up if you just set CV124 to zero. Uh, <laughs> if you need to hire somebody, guys, I'm available for you. And any, any reasonable technician should have known that this is the case. Now, um, after I told them that, I think they got a handle on it and eventually I received this really massive box. It's a really huge box. It's pretty obvious that Bachman was very proud of this model. If you look at a bunch of historical photos, and again, if you don't know, I'm a retired historian and I always dig this kind of thing. Learning about the history of this, I really, really enjoyed the effort and pride they put into this model by telling me everything that was going on. Even on the box, I got a lot of information. So excellent, no doubt about that. Let's go ahead and open this and got this cool, I don't know, what is this? Some, some sort of almost looks like it would be a placemat, but um, it, it just kind of covered everything. There's a secondary cover here and we'll start to pull out the stuff. Here obviously are the uh, dummy plugs that they pulled out and I have no idea what these are. Either way, they're not going to get used. Oh, look, you get a cool set of figures. I will definitely use those. They are specifically for the Pullman here. And here is one of the two power cars. Check that out. That is really nice. And one of the complaints I've had about OO scale is OO scale looks a little bastardized to me for some reason. It always looks a little bit toy-like. Um, I don't know why. It's partly probably because of its size. It's just easier to kind of see the plastic in it. But I think they've done a great job here. And of course, I guess the other thing is I'm used to seeing a lot of Hornby products. But this is made by Bachman and they seem to do a little bit better job. Probably because they're a dedicated model railroad company. Done a nice job. You can see the grab irons. Now, if you're used to HO scale, um, the grab irons may look a little thick, but that's because, you know, this is 176 scale. It's going to be a little bit bigger. You can see inside they've got nice table lamps. Let's flip this around here. This is the blue section of the train, and there are two different sections of the train. Look at the underbody details. Pretty decent. Pretty good, except I'm not sure if the original prototype had DCC on board or written on it, but that's okay. I'm not sure. I guess the original one probably had an end coupler. I don't, don't have to admit I don't like these tension lock couplers very much, but they still seem to hold on to them in OO scale. Here is the... What is this going to be? This is... I have to remember how this all fits together. There's a nice photo that shows you, but look at nice hoses separately applied. Spin it around here. They obviously just took a lot of care um, in this product and they spent a lot of time making sure that um, you felt um, as if you're looking at a really high quality model. And I suppose this is, um, yeah, it's not bad, right? You can actually see the imprint of the fans on here. If they wanted to take it one step further, they'd actually be separately fitted pieces. But compared to what I've seen for a lot of OO scale, it's really hard to complain. Um, about these being 100% molded, but I certainly like them. Uh, you can see the little text details on there. 
Here's the trucks. You can see the pickups through them, which I always found a little bit distracting, but it's not the hugest deal ever. Go ahead and scan this side for you so you can see what they have. All right, I am going to make it a point to put figures into this. I think this is just too pretty not to look realistic on my track. So I'm going to make sure to do that. Get this out of the way. And oh, you get a nice certificate under here. Looks like I got number 987. It sounds good. Decent number, I guess. It's, well, it's a nice descending sequence, actually. All right, we've got a menu. Oh, very cool. Let's see if any of this stuff I would have eaten. Yeah. Looks like you got, yeah, looks, yeah, first class service. It's an all first class train, so that makes sense. Oh, we get afternoon tea. The fresh fish, oh, it looks tasty. Very nice. And you get this really nice book that gives you a very, very comprehensive history. This actually didn't stay in service very long, but, um, you know, for me, right, this, this kind of thing is wonderful, so. There we go, parts diagram. Hopefully I won't have to use this. Go ahead and, yeah, very nice. All right, it seems like it's got everything I need here. Some maintenance. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, here's the, I did use a lock pilot. And here are the house sound. Again, I picked this, I don't know why. I just, I picked it for no other reason than that's just the one I picked. So here we go, it looks like the table lights, all that in there. Okay, looks good. We'll run through those sounds later, as you know I like to do. And now we'll do the rest of the cars, and you'll get a better look at these also when I open up the shells and actually put figures inside. So I'm just kind of run these through. Okay, in order for this to look and work properly, you actually have to assemble these in a particular order. And if you notice, one side will be red, and the other side will be blue. And you have, there is actually no power coupling between the two sides. You actually have to assemble these correctly um, or else it just, it just doesn't work properly. So you gotta make sure to have the two non-power couplings. And if you look, um, I think this is actually a pretty good power coupling system. You can see here on one side, let me kind of pull it up. See on one side, there's this hook nice hook clip and you can see the power and the other side doesn't have that so that's how you know which sides clamp together let's see if I can actually do this for the camera here and again those are the same sides so let me spin this around and if you just there we go you kind of have to make sure to get the pressure right it's easier to do this lay it on its side and then assemble it then flip it up on the track so there you go, and then all you do is you stick a little screwdriver underneath here, and you can just be really careful and prime apart, and you'll be able to take the two apart. Pretty nice, really nice system. It's really better than a lot of them I've seen. All right, let's go ahead and do a run through the sounds really quick for you. Okay, yikes, that uh, that didn't sound very good. Let's, gosh, let's tear into this and see what's going on. Why does this sound so doggone bad? As you see, you can get into this by tearing into these screws here. There are four of them. Just unscrew those on the bottom and pop those long screws out. And you have to kind of work a little bit to get the shell off, but it's not too bad. And here is the interior. You can see that they have reflectors for the lights. 
nice, nice context. But the problem is this speaker here. This is what I paid for. Well, I guess I had to pay for the sound file and for the, the decoder, but this, yeah, this is kind of inadequate. And I've seen these speakers, this particular brand of speaker, and it, it's just not a very good setup. There's the lock sound decoder. Let's take a look. Well, it's gonna be plenty of room to put people in, but we need to get this thing out of here and get this replaced with something a lot better. So let's do that. It just, it didn't need to be this compact. Well, maybe they thought it did, but I guarantee you that it does not to be, need to be this compact. So let's try something else. Okay, that didn't take a whole lot of work, but you know, bigger speaker box, two speakers instead of one, that way you're not overdriving it if you want volume. That's the way to go with these kinds of things. And so I always try to make custom speaker boxes that fit the geometry of the interior space really well. And I think I've done a pretty good job here, especially considering how bad the original speaker box combination was. Let's try this again. The train standing at platform one is a 10 past six little Pullman service to Manchester Central, calling at Chimney and Manchester Central. Platform one of a little Pullman to Manchester Central.
Okay, there was a little bit of looping in that file. I've noticed a lot of custom files from sort of small shops have a lot of looping. I hope someday they kind of learn to fix that or if there's an automatic program. But I'm going to go ahead and change the non-sound decoder out in the B um, power car to just one of these UK diesel economies. And although I know it doesn't have the exact sound, I think given what I heard from the house um, sound file that this should be pretty close. So I, at the same time, if you notice, I created two speaker boxes. So I think this is going to work just fine. So we'll plop this down in there, get in there. Should fit just peachy. Come on, get in there. I think you can do it. There we go. I'll just plop this down in there, and then we'll just affix my custom speaker box using double-sided tape over the top of it. It should fit in there really well. Of course, you've already seen the sound improvement, and this is what we've got. All right, I didn't hear a turbocharger in the house one, so I'm going to have to try all of these to see which one, and there aren't very many, so we'll try these different ones out and see what we can hear, see what we can hear, that's dumb. We can hear what we can hear, see which one works better.
All right, so I think the class 47 sounds closest to what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and fix the speaker in here. I think in fact when it's running, it'll be relatively unnoticeable. So um, let's go ahead and take these cars apart so I can get all the people in them. And what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to do an experiment in ASMR. Can ASMR and model railroading coexist? Well, we're about to find out. So let's just give that a try. I'll be back in a little bit after this sequence is over. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it. It's my first attempt at anything like this.
Okay, let me give you my final thoughts on this. Again, it's not something that just came out, but it's something I just acquired, and uh, hopefully people will get something out of this. Anyway, the things that I like about this model, and there are a lot of things to like. Firstly, it's just a really well-considered model. It all fits together really well, and you can tell they really thought out some of the details and how this was going to look when all was said and done. It has really nice exterior details too. I think just the right amount that kind of split the difference between having something ultra premium with stuff hanging all over the place and just enough to make it look great while running. I think it looks great while running, and so they've done a really good job there. Next, I think for anyone trying to create a premium model, there should be two color at least interiors. So that's something that happens here, and I appreciate that a lot. After that, a very well-considered um, electrical coupling system. One of the best of all the models I own. After that, we have lighted interiors, which is, you know, basically for Sam, I think sprung buffers are his thing, lighted interiors are mine, and of course, I love the lighted interiors. And lastly, it's a good runner. It handles well on my track, doesn't have any problems with my unpowered points, and even though I didn't show it running with the sound off because of time here, I'm really starting to go for time, it has a very pleasant sound to it when it's running. And I think it's because of sort of the thick plastic they use in the large empty spaces within, but it just sounds right when it's running. Now, there are some things that could have been done better without a doubt. It's certainly not a perfect model, and at this price point, I, maybe it can't be, but things that could have been done better. Firstly, it has weak headlights. Very, very weak. Um, they just don't have any kind of gravitas when you're running it, particularly at night. Now, granted, the fact it has lighted interiors helps a lot, but the headlights are just puny and effete. Speaking of lights, the table lamps, which could be cool, frankly, don't look like anything when they're lit. I mean, they, they obviously do light up, but it's just so it's just so unbrilliant that you don't even really notice, so I'm not sure what the point was. This was a big fail on their part. Although I didn't point this out specifically in the video, there is a lot of glue holding these windows on from the inside, and it's just distracting. I don't think it looks very great, to be honest with you, so... That's, that's a big minus. They could have figured out a better system. They either clip this into place or friction hold it or something or even friction weld it. But the, the glue just looks ugly. I put two motor setup here. What I actually mean is the two decoder setup. I think it would have been possible for them to accomplish what they were going to accomplish with through lines. It, there's, it's not long enough to really have had to worry about, so I don't think they needed a two decoder setup. Here. And lastly, some of the paint is a little bit fuzzy. I just don't see super duper sharp lines. It's not bad, but it's not premium quality either. So yeah, there's that to consider. So, and I have a special kind of dismension towards the model century. I don't know if the technician gave me was just inexperienced. I'm going to assume he wasn't trying to scam me by saying he needed to put another sound decoder in there and jack up the price, but they should know how to program CB values so that it takes care of things. And also, the speaker and the baffle were terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Okay, that's about all I have for you today. This is a long one. In fact, this is the longest video I've ever done. I think a lot of it was because of that ASMR <laughs> experiment. So I don't know how that went. I may just put it in as a separate video for people who like that kind of thing. And probably a lot of model railroaders aren't people who like that kind of thing. Now I know from my analytics that the running sessions aren't liked by a ton of you. I think I have about 15% retention on running sessions, but that's 15% of the people that I want to serve because I value all your viewership. And of course, you can always stop it before the running session if you don't want to see it. And in this running session, I am going to have my Hush Hush running. I lost all of my video footage um, with the Hush Hush unboxing and everything, so I just forgot about it. And now I'll put it in with this because at least it'll be nice to kind of show it off, I guess. And I'll have a separate video with it somehow, sometime in the future. So as per usual, let me know what you think. I really want to know, give your feedback. Do you like this model? I know a lot of you think that you can't run OO scale, but you can. You can run it. Um, it's OO scale, but HO gauge. Um, granted, it doesn't look sort of right if you have it next to a bunch of HO stuff, but again, I don't care. It looks good enough to me, and I don't want to cut myself from the wonderful world of model railroading, so I'm more than happy to have an OO scale item. So, yeah, let me know what you think. As always, please like and uh, share this, you know, and um, if you really want to help me out, I don't ask for any money for any of this. I do it because I love it, and I love talking about trains, but it really does help me out if you subscribe, so please do that. So until next time, appreciate your viewership. Take care. Happy model railroading.